Today we will show you a very interesting video provided by Japanese swordsmith Komiya Kokuten and Kimura Kanemitsu. It's about the Akire process in Japanese sword making. We will explain scientifically on what happened in the video. Let's discover exciting facts. As you know, in Japanese sword making, tamahagane or a Japanese steel is forged into the shape of the sword. And in the final step, yakire is performed before it is finished by sharpening and polishing. This process is very important. If yakire is failed, the whole process is over, such as getting cracks on the blade. Now, let's go back to the opening video and try to guess what will happen to the sword next. I saw the sword is red. It must be very hot. Yes, indeed. It's around 800 degrees Celsius. So, a hot steel will expand and when it's cooled down into the water, it will shrink, I suppose. Also, I know Japanese sword is curved, but it looks straight. That's the important point. Then, I guess, after putting it in the water, the sword will shrink and gradually curve upward. Okay, let's watch the rest of the video and see the correct answer. <laughs> Looks like he's alive! Did the sword curve downward once? Good observation. We also have another video which we could take a closer look. Let's confirm the phenomenon. It definitely curved downward once, but why? In this video, I'm gonna explain two principles which are important for the sword transformation. Your question can be explained by the first one, which is thermal expansion and contraction of the steel. Let me ask you some questions. How does the cross section of the sword look like? It looks like this when it's seen from the front. Yes, it is. Just before Yakide, the steel is heated up evenly to the same temperature. Question. Which part will cool down first? I think the thinner blade part will cool down faster than the thicker upper part. Exactly. On top of that, the upper part of the sword is usually covered in a thick layer of clay like this before yakire. This also makes it take longer time to cool down the upper part. Looking at the side of the sword, when it is heated up to 800 degrees Celsius, a sword can expand to roughly 6 mm. That's big changes. Thus, when the sword is put in the water, blade part, which is thinner, cools down quicker and shrinks earlier than the upper part. This changes the shape of the sword significantly. Later, the upper part gradually shrinks, and the sword curves upward. This is why you saw the Japanese sword curve downward first. If it was just due to the thermal contraction and expansion, how come a Japanese sword curves upward in the end? I think the sword will just turn back to the shape as it was before heated up. It can be explained by the second principle, which is structural changes of steel crystal. A Japanese sword is made up of steel containing less than 1% of carbon, and the majority of iron, which is over 99%. Details are in my previous video, please check the link in the description. In the atomic level, when it is heated up, carbon atoms are randomly positioned among iron atoms because the gaps between iron atoms are enough to trap carbon atoms. However, once it is cooled down, the crystal structure of iron changes and carbon atoms are released from the iron crystal because the gaps between iron atoms shrink. This results in the formation of two layer structures, like this. One is the pure iron crystal, and another is iron carbon crystal. However, if the hot steel is cooled down immediately, the carbon atoms do not have enough time to move and will be captured in the iron crystal, even though the gaps between iron crystals are not enough for the carbon atoms. 
This results in the formation of a distorted carbon iron crystal. As you can imagine, compared to the neatly arranged structure, the messy structure increases the volume. Can I compare the volume of a messy stack close to the neatly folded one? Yes, that's easy to get. By folding neatly, you can make clothes compact. So, just now, I told you that the blade part cools down faster than the back of the sword during yakiire. In that process, blade part is cooled down immediately and changed into the distorted crystal. And the back of the sword is cooled down slowly, resulted in neatly arranged crystal. I think you already know why the sword curves upward after yakiire. To sum up, what happened in yakiire videos are, in the beginning, the blade starts to cool down and shrink, and bend downward. After the crystal structure of the blade steel becomes distorted, back of the sword is cooled down slowly, and the sword greatly curves upward. Because Japanese sword bends significantly in this process, little mistake could make cracks on the katana. That's one of the reason why yakire is so difficult. Thanks for watching. We are very happy if you'll have more fun with Japanese cultures by learning deeply. Let's discover more exciting facts. We'll continue to share our unique videos. Mm-hmm.